my name is Kit. I'm a live streamer on Twitch primarily, but I am starting my journey to uh, branch out with other forms of content. So here we go, first YouTube video, yay! If you happenstanced here, uh, this will be uh, a little recap on the TwitchCon 2024 journey that I had. Um, just the weekend, uh, my thoughts, social anxiety, how I overcame it, uh, all of that sort of things, my goals for next year, um, and my hopes to see you guys next year as well. So if you are interested in hearing all about that or uh, if you came for the makeup part and you want to see what kind of makeup I wear, you're in the right place. Yay. Keep watching. Let's begin. I'm going to chit chat while I do my makeup. Pardon the, uh, the wet hair. You know, I just got out of the shower. I'm going to do my hair after I do my makeup. Oh, I just thought it would be easier to go ahead and uh, get the makeup going while we are doing this. So here we are. My skin is truly freaking out. We've got all this going on over here. I got one that's like about to, but I'm waiting until after I stream today. So I don't want to wear a pimple patch on my face all day. So anyway, I'm going to start with some handy dandy sunscreen. Overall, uh, I had a very positive experience with TwitchCon. It was a lot of fun. I got to meet people, uh, you know, like longtime viewers in chat who I consider friends. I stayed with them in an Airbnb. Uh, you know, we got to all meet for the first time. That was that was fun. Oh, I really hope that my camera focuses on my face and not my mic. I'm, I apologize in advance for any out of focus shots. That's annoying. Um, I met tons of viewers and creators alike. Thank you for anyone who came up to speak with me at the convention, ask for me to sign their badge. What the heck? That's so cute. And ask for like a photo with me. That was that made my day. So thank you. Thank you for uh you know, taking time out of your convention day to make me feel extra special. We also ended up staying some extra days after the convention to, uh, like, go sightsee in San Diego. Like, while I did have a really great time overall in San Diego, I did experience a lot of social anxiety. And, um, yeah, I just kind of want to walk you guys through the weekend and talk about that. Dude, seriously, camera, focus on my face, please. Stop it. <gasps> I will figure this out. I will figure out it focusing on me and not the mic anymore. I promise. We'll do this. We'll get through it. Okay. So um, I just kind of wanted to walk you guys through the weekend and tell you all about everything. <laughs> um. So Wednesday is the day that we flew in, and on Wednesday, um, we were kind of waiting for everyone to get there, so we, you know, checked in at the Airbnb. We checked in at the Airbnb. Um, we went grocery shopping for, like, you know, snacks and stuff for the weekend. We just went to, like, a local grocery store there. Got some snackums. However, obviously, like, we're in a a place where we don't have a car, right? So we had to, like, Uber there and Uber our groceries back. And the wait times for Ubers in San Diego, oh, my goodness. I was really surprised by how long we would have to wait sometimes for Ubers to come pick us up. While we were waiting outside of the grocery store with our groceries, there was this, like, really scary guy that kind of came up to us so we initially were waiting outside just like standing near our groceries and um this guy like we were standing in a circle right and this guy comes and like shoves his way through our circle like okay kind of weird um but okay like <laughs> that's fine excuse us for standing in your way um and then he just you know continued walking on down the storefronts the Uber is getting closer, and um, we go to wait near, like, a ledge that's closer to the Uber pickup spot. And the guy that shoved his way through before came back and um, walked by us and kind of said some, like, 
among the TOS racial slurs, shall we say, and uh, homophobic slurs. He was walking past our, our group as he said that and then like stopped abruptly and turned around and started ripping into our variety pack of White Claw we just bought. And he was like, hey, yo, give me some of these. I had to like lunge over the box and like hold it close. And I was like, no, no. And then he kind of gets defensive and he starts yelling at other people in the group. And it was really weird. That was our first day, by the way, in California. Um, so yeah, there are some there are some crazies for sure. Um, but thankfully, most of the time we were like with Twitch people where there are less crazies. The rest of the day, we just kind of chilled and grilled some food, got to know the house, all that good stuff. The house came with a hot tub, which we were basically in every night. It was so nice, uh, especially after like a long day of walking, which all of us are, you know, gamers, not really the active cardio enthusiasts. Uh, that, you know, other people in the world are. So it was very nice for icky sore muscles and just overall tiredness to have that hot tub to just relax and kind of decompress after a busy day. I feel like this is not sitting very well on my face. It's looking kind of gross. My skin is just struggling to bounce back after the trip. Traveling is always... You're introducing, you know, new uh, microbiomes on your skin and the air changes and pollution, humidity, germs, bacteria, all that kind of stuff. My skin's going to need a month or so to recover. I think I'm getting over a cold that I caught at TwitchCon. Nope, no sneeze. It's just going to fill up my sinuses and leave it there. Great. Okay, cool. Anyway, I haven't I haven't felt like the sick achies or a fever or anything. I've just kind of had like a sore throat. Very, very tired and um, my nose issue. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. Anyway, so Thursday, we went to the zoo. Saw lots of aminoles. The weather was pretty nice. There was lots of walking. The zoo is also very hilly. Um, one thing that was different from the last time I was at the San Diego Zoo, they had... A panda exhibit. So that was kind of neat to see some pandas. Panda, panda, panda. And at this time, I actually got to see the snow leopards in action. Uh, when I went in 2019, I actually didn't get to see the snow leopards at all. They didn't come out all day. The snow leopards are my favorite animal. So I really wanted to see them this time. And I'm glad I got to see them. I got some good vlog footage too. So. Watch out for the zoo vlog if you like snow leopards because I got some good bitches. Uh, but yeah, the zoo was fun. We spent pretty much all day there until close. And then we went to the convention and they had like badge pickup that day. So we all went to go pick up our badges. And then shortly after badge pickup, the partner party was starting. So um, I had to separate from my group and uh go to the partner party but thankfully i didn't have to go alone spoonerism came with me shout out to spoonerism for being my emotional support buddy and looking out for me uh thursday night <laughs> uh so that was a lot of fun that was also my first time meeting spoon at the partner party i think was where i felt the most social anxiety out of the entire trip it was a constant internal battle of like imposter syndrome you know, thinking like I don't deserve to be here amongst a lot of these other partners. I have been, you know, streaming on Twitch for quite some time and I've worked hard, but there have been, for those that have been following me for quite some time, there have been some uh, hiccups in my Twitch career, I guess, where I've kind of stepped a little further back from Twitch and it hasn't been my main focus. For financial reasons, mostly I've had to, you know, get a normal person job. And uh, yeah, that, that really sapped the time that I was able to put into content creation. And from that, I've kind of taken, you know, 10 steps back in my Twitch career, which, which feels really shitty on a personal level, but it also kind of uh, in turn ruined some of my relationships with 
um, some other, you know, Twitch partners in the space. In addition to kind of losing the name for myself, those that frequently are in my Twitch streams, um, I did a subathon recently, well, this year, that lasted seven months. Um, so I started in January and I streamed seven months straight, 24-7, sleep cam and everything. So uh, that also hindered me from being able to talk with other content creators in their chat and like maintain that relationship that we you know, may have once had. It felt a little awkward for me going into that partner party being like, hey, oh my God, hi, I haven't talked to you for seven months, but sup? You know, that's just constant internal struggles, you know? I just feel like I was absent for so long. And so going into the partner party, I was constantly dealing with, are these people going to remember me? Like, I still want to go up and say hi, but it feels awkward in like the partner party specific setting because, you know, everyone there is there because they've made a name for themselves. And I guess personally, it just feels like I've lost that. I'm I'm not the big name I once was, even though I wasn't really big, but you know what I mean? I just, I'm not where I once was. Um, I did meet a lot of really great, fantastic, awesome, amazing creators. I got to say hi to some friends that I, I, I do still have in the space, say hi to old friends and approach content creators who I, you know, probably wouldn't have had the chance to meet outside of the partner party. That was nice. And I'm thankful that I got to do that. But again, I just kind of constantly felt like, Ooh, do I approach them? Like I, I didn't want to interrupt them in their, their safe space, if you will. But all in all, it was a good time. I just had a lot to overcome personally, to like psych myself up for that event. I can really yap and like forget to blend my makeup in before it like dries. <laughs> but yeah, again, thanks to Spoon for being there and uh, being able to kind of keep me grounded. I think I would have let my social anxiety skyrocket too much in that situation alone. So yeah. Um. Anyway, after the partner party, I don't know if you guys hear the construction going on, by the way. There was a fire in my apartment complex when I was gone. <laughs> That's probably another story I should tell. Uh, but while I was at TwitchCon, there was a fire literally across the hallway um, in my apartment complex. And um, they're replacing the floors from, like, the sprinkler damage from when the uh, fire alarm sprinklers went off. I don't know if you hear hammering and drilling in the background of my talking, but it's there. I apologize. <laughs> But yeah, so after the partner party, we all kind of mobbed over to this after party that was held by Blurp and Meld, who are um, some other companies in the space. They do like alerts and copyright free music. Um, they had a big after party at a nightclub downtown that was within like walking distance. So we just kind of all mobbed over there together, planning to go in at the same time. We had to like check in and get wristbands and uh, then go through like security to be able to, to go inside. And while I appreciate that they had, you know, security and that sort of thing, uh, they wouldn't let me in because I had hand sanitizer. And I don't know why. Can If you know, can someone tell me in the comments, like, why do they not allow you inside of a nightclub with hand sanitizer? I'm sorry. I didn't want to get sick. I'm afraid of germs. Maybe you're immunocompromised and you want to keep yourself clean. Like, why are you not allowed to bring in hand sanitizer? Anyway, so they turned me away from the door and that was awkward, but also kind of a blessing in disguise um, because I realized that while I was walking up to security, I had lost Spoon in that whole thing. And like half of our group that we mobbed over with like went in already, but people that I didn't really know. And then like the half that I did know kind of stayed out. So I was like, ah. Uh, okay, well, I will go give this to a friend and then come back. They were like, oh, there's no reentry. You can't get back in, honey. I was like, okay, well, I don't want to throw this away. Like, it's it, it was Thursday, mind you. I had the whole weekend to go. And, you know, conventions, germs, con flu. I didn't want to get sick. I say that as I'm sick. So I was not about to throw away my brand new bottle of hand sanitizer. So yeah, I exited the line and I called up my friends that I was staying with in the Airbnb. And I was like, hey, sorry. They won't let me in with hand sanitizer. I need you to come take my hand sanitizer. 
I also had my camera at the time too, and I didn't want to bring that into a nightclub setting. Uh, cause I feel like it definitely would have gotten broken or I would have lost the lens cap or, you know, things like that. I was just kind of, if, if, if you saw any of the photos that I posted all weekend long, I just kind of had my camera like hanging on a shoulder strap, just kind of like hanging on my hips, you know, uh, exposed. So it probably definitely would have gotten broken, but yeah, I was able to meet back up with spoon on the outside after I got off the phone with uh my friends he was like wait what they won't let you in with hand sanitizer that's fucking stupid we had we had lost the other half of our group i don't know where they went there was like a whole sea of people outside this nightclub waiting to get in oh that's another thing when i was waiting in line to to like get checked for security there was this guy that came up and he was like um nudging to the bouncer like hey i'll give you a hundred dollars if you let me in as blurt meld vip and the <laughs> The bouncer was like, hell no, nah! giving him some attitude and then you know, said some other things. But I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> what business do you have being in this nightclub for, you know, a TwitchCon group? Like, what? I, that was weird. Ooh, fast forward to um, when my friends got there, they were able to take my camera and my hand sanitizer. And then Spoon and I were like, OK, we'll go in. Mind you, I'm not like a nightclub person. So when I realized that this was at a nightclub and it was very, ns, 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 I was like, oh, this is going to be hella awkward. But I was promised, I was told in a private DM with the companies, what? You can wait. I'm recording a video right now. Please and thank you. This needy bitch. I, I was instructed via personal DM that there would be a spot on the rooftop to consult with brands about um, like a particular product I was wanting to collab with. That was my whole reason for getting in. I just wanted to skip the whole nightclub scene and go straight to the rooftop deck. So when Spoon and I went around the corner to like try to get back in line, they had gotten rid of the VIP line and opened it up to general admission. And the entire block was filled with a line of people. Like it was around the building, around the corner and down the block. And Spoon and I were kind of like, Hell no, I don't want to wait in this line. So we just kind of turned around. Um, my friends ended up going to like a classy rooftop bar across the street. So we decided to just go and hang out there instead. Much more the pace and the vibe of the evening. It was nice and quiet. There was a cozy fire, heat lamps. And later on, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen like on Twitter or any of the drama that kind of unfolded with that blurp and meld party. There was some heavy roofing happening there with some of the streamers there so i'm kind of glad i didn't get in again it was like a blessing in disguise um in 2019 i did have a situation where i did get roofied as well so i'm glad i didn't have to go through with that again that was thursday <laughs> friday was finally the first day of the convention i actually woke up feeling sick on friday like i had a very severe sore throat and i just felt so tired despite like, you know, getting six, seven hours of sleep, which isn't as much as I normally get. Normally I get 10 hours. I low-key need 10 hours. <laughs> I just, I felt, I felt pretty shitty on Friday, but I didn't have like the sicky achies, you know what I mean? So I didn't know if I was getting sick or if it was like the air in California. The weather there was super smoggy the entire time. Anyway, so Friday was a pretty low-key convention day. Um, I booked the whole weekend with a bunch of panels like TwitchCon has the convention floor, obviously, and they have like booths at the convention floor and they have like planned Twitch Rivals events for like the streamers and they have a streaming space and they have tons of activities. But then they also have panels that you can go to, which are like classes or like showings that you can go see. And so I kind of booked my trip full of a bunch of panels. I just wanted to like experience at all because in 2019 when I went to TwitchCon I didn't go to any panels or anything like that I just wandered around the entire time and now I'm kind of thinking to myself like how did I do that how did I just wander around aimlessly like what the heck I missed out on so many of the cool panels so I'm glad I went to those this year but apparently they were also streamed so I'm kind of wondering if I got have skipped the panels and gone to some other things like meetups and whatnot and focused on networking talking with brands but I still enjoyed the panels I just I think Twitch needs to be more clear about where they're streaming the panels when they do. So that would have been helpful to know that those, you know, VODs were going to be there later. Because there was a time in my trip where I kind of felt like I was overwhelmed with too many options of panels to go to. 
and I was forced to kind of pick one over the other because the timings overlapped. So it would have just been nice to know prior that they were streamed and that I could have visited the VODs for the ones that I missed. Friday night, we went out to eat at uh, one of the restaurants that's kind of close right outside the convention center. Uh, the Union Kitchen was like a tap house and some bar food. And that was a pretty nice, low-key, nice vibe setting. Um, I had like a spaghetti and meatballs dinner. And I had a really, really yummy mocktail while I was there. So good. It was like a pineapple coconut mocktail with um, like an edible flower on top. And it had aquafaba, which is chickpea-like juice, (laughs) uh, shaken into the drink. So it was kind of foamy and creamy. It was really good. I kind of want to make it on my own. And then, yeah, Saturday of the convention was a really busy day as well. But I was able to, that was the day I was able to stream. That was when I had like an hour or so gap between panels. This is so awkward. Like usually when I do this, I put my hand right here, but I can't because I'm at, my mic is right there. I think I need to start using my clip-on microphone when I do this. I might do that next episode. We're going to try, we're going to try new things until, until it works. Sorry if the audio is a little wonky. Like I, I'm not actively conscious about how close I am to the mic while I'm talking. So sometimes it might be a little further away like this. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Ah. Ooh, Saturday was also the drag show. So in addition to the panels that they had, they had two like big shows, uh, the drag show and the cosplay showcase. I love drag shows. It's always like so full of energy and spunk and personality and the fact that it was like twitch creators performing in drag it was so cool you could just really yeah feel a sense of community and i was like wow this is this is twitch these are twitch creators by the way wow dang slay so that was really fun i really liked that especially the last performance i think his username was something like get jacks 10 out of 10 11 out of 10 performance really good really good. Saturday was also the day of the block party. Again, I got to move my mic. Sorry, so I can use this. And for those that don't know what the block party is, well, in the past years of TwitchCon, there's always been like an extra activity or like concert or party that you can buy like to be included in your your weekend pass ticket or I think you can just buy it separately as well in the past it's always been concerts but this year they did a block party so they reserved and shut down like four blocks in the city right outside of the convention center they had like a bunch of restaurants and it was completely secure too so they had like little blockades blocking off like the restaurants or businesses that weren't participating and then the ones that were were just kind of like open to the street and um, we got like a wristband with three little drink tickets on it. They had street bars set up. They had a DJ booth on one side and a karaoke booth on the other side. That was pretty hype. They had like an escape room and I think they had some other activity businesses as well. Our group just kind of went through every restaurant sampling all the food because they had like little tasters or appetizers at every single restaurant. The only one that we didn't get to try was the sushi one, but uh, we got to try all of the other restaurants that were participating. That was really fun. I really liked that because it was a bunch of different kinds of food and styles like seafood, Mexican, fried chicken, sushi, a crepe shop, uh, like an upscale steak restaurant. It was just so much fun. There was such a big variety of foods and I really liked that. The beer, wine, and like non-alcoholic drinks were free. Only the hard alcohol drinks costed drink tickets. So if you were a beer or wine lover and were in the mood to drink that, you just got free drinks all night long. Some of the restaurants, I'd say most of the restaurants, had their bars open as well. So you could use your drink tickets at their bars and get like different types of spirits. Like if you didn't like the generic stuff that was being served at the street bar, their gin and tonics were kind (coughs) of but the ones in the restaurants were a plus really good so you could get like better quality hard alcohol inside the restaurants for the same ticket so yeah that was a lot of fun I really liked the block party kind of setup they did this year I hope Twitch will do that again next year and maybe even make it a little bigger like maybe six blocks of downtown I don't know. Sometimes it just felt really cramped, but also not at the same time because it was outside like fresh air. I appreciated that too. I think next year it should be like just a couple more blocks involved, like kind of widen the space a bit, maybe have it go for longer. Three hours was all it went and it felt like it took us three hours to get through all of the restaurant's food. We basically finished taste testing the last restaurant when it was time to go. So I I do wish it was maybe like another hour or two longer 
just so that you could hang out and participate in some of the activities that were going on there. But yeah, that was Saturday. Saturday was was long, but great. <laughs> Sunday was the last day of the convention center and the day that I had the most panels planned, I think. Sunday was like a super packed day. I initially had planned on streaming a little bit on Sunday at the convention as well, but I just, I wasn't able to because I really packed my schedule full and it was like the last day. So I wanted to experience everything that I could. That was the day uh, that I did the K-pop dance panel. Um, I'm going to post a video of me doing the K-pop dance once I, once I master it. <laughs> I've been, I've been practicing a little on my own, but Umi no Kaiju taught that class and it was so cute and so much fun. And it seemed like she was having so much fun as well. So I was very happy for her that she was so happy. I got to meet her as well. That was, that was a lot of fun. There was also some Just Dance panels throughout the weekend. I got to meet a lot of other creators that are into like the lifestyle kind of stuff, like, you know, dancing or, you know, makeup, beauty, that kind of thing. So, ooh, at, uh, I went to some makeup panels that day too. And at one of the makeup panels, I was brave enough to get up at the end and speak on one of the microphones and ask a question. <laughs> My question was just kind of asking like as a primarily gaming content creator, how would you recommend they branch out into the beauty space and, you know, start making both kinds of content? But they recommended that I start streaming to the beauty and body art category on Twitch. So I think I'll start doing some of my get ready with me's in, like live streamed on Twitch, but I, I will also do this form of video as well. I already had the plan to start this form of video. I'll just kind of start combining the two until it makes sense. Sunday was also the cosplay showcase day. So that was pretty neat. A bunch of cosplayers got on stage and showed off their outfit. Uh, they were like different categories. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. I like cosplay. Cosplay used to be a big interest of mine. And fun fact, it actually used to be what I wanted to be known for on social media. When I was first trying to be active on social media, I was posting about cosplay stuff, actually. Uh, but cosplay is just so expensive. It takes up so much space and I live in a bedroom basically. <laughs> so I don't have space for cosplay anymore, but I do still really appreciate the craft and the time and effort that goes into making costumes. Um, so that was like TwitchCon and then we stayed uh, until Wednesday. So we like, we stayed a full seven days. So Monday uh, we planned like a low key beach day because we knew we'd be really tired after the convention. Um, but we also bought like this thing called a city pass where you got a big excursion and then like three other smaller excursions or something like that. So we planned on going to SeaWorld. That was the big excursion. And then we used it for the zoo, which was a smaller one. And we decided to go to the USS Midway Museum on Monday. The weather seemed like it was going to be nice all day. So we started with the Midway Museum. And then by the time we left the Midway Museum and made it to the beach, it was cloudy and windy and cold. <laughs> so I didn't get to enjoy the beach that was really sad actually every time I go to the beach the beach hates me the beach doesn't want to be my friend the beach gets cloudy and, and cold so we stayed for like five minutes and then got an uber home <laughs> this is crazy Mew is actually playing with toys right now she has her toys strung out from her toy box because I think she's so impatient that she hasn't gotten food yet do you want to come up and say hi You can if you want. Come on up. This is my little kitty, Mew. She's hungry. She wants some food. Yeah. You'll get some in a minute when I'm done with the video, okay? Can you wait for the, the end of the video? Okay. She doesn't have a lot to say when I hold on to her, but the moment I set her down, she goes meow, meow, meow all day. She has a lot to say. When she's on the ground, huh? Uh, so that was our that was our Monday. Still pretty low key, I'd say, and the weather was really nice. Tuesday was our SeaWorld day, and that was like our our last day in San Diego. So uh, we went to SeaWorld. We we spent all day there, basically. That was really cool, actually. I didn't really expect SeaWorld to be like a water park as well, but they had like water park rides and roller coasters. So that was pretty crazy. That was cool. I liked that. That'll definitely be in the vlog. Hopefully we got some good shots. Um, but yeah, I love roller coasters. Love. So I had fun. <laughs> One of the rides we decided to go on 
was technically classified as a wet ride, but we saw people getting off that weren't too wet. So we were like, ah, why not? Fuck it. Let's give it a let's give it a go. Um, <clears throat> spoiler alert. We got wet. The big like drop initially, we sat in the front. I don't know why. I should have known. I should have known, man. But we sat in the front because we thought that the front didn't get as wet. Like the splashes would go up and then like shh on the people in the back. No, they went up and the people in the front. So we got pretty wet. The initial drop actually wasn't so bad. But then we like went around the corner and throughout the park, there are like these cannons that you can activate. You have to pay like $6 and then you get a, a chance to shoot at someone. So someone shot us. And we got wet. And then there was like a whole other half of this like water ride that we didn't even see from the front. So it like kind of went down in the back to like another drop where we got absolutely soaked. My jeans were so wet. <laughs> and my hair was was messed up completely. And then I had frizzy hair the rest of the day. Oh, the humidity was already bad. But once you get it wet and then let it air dry, I should say air dry without brushing it through, I turn into a troll. I'm just frizzy poof afro. So that was my hair for the rest of the day. Wow, I can really yap and then not even do my makeup. I'm just like yapping away. And I've been holding this eyelash curler, but I haven't even been using it. To be fair, it's kind of hard to talk sometimes when I use like an eyelash curler or while I'm doing like lip liner or mascara. It's a little hard to talk. So while we were at SeaWorld, it was also a really nice day. The weather was nice. The sun was out. That's the day that I got a little sunburned on my face, despite me putting on sunscreen. Maybe just the combination of getting a little wet washed away some of the sunscreen, but I ended up getting a little bit of like sunburn on my forehead and like my nose. And then my, that's when my scalp got burnt too. Ugh. We decided to try to go to the beach again for beach day attempt number two. Guess what happened? By the time we got to the beach, it was cold and windy again. Yay. So I didn't get to fully enjoy the beach. We still laid on the beach because it was like kind of sunny. The sun was inter intermittent throughout the clouds, but it was so windy that it was just cold and miserable. And I was like laying on my towel with a sweatshirt on top of me, like <laughs> trying to just enjoy laying on the beach. <laughs> and then Wednesday was the day that we flew home. It was time to go back. So sad. We were all really sad when we had to fly back. Next year, I would like to be able to make it to TwitchCon again. I think I'd like to stay a little closer to the convention center itself, like walk to more things rather than Uber everywhere because the Ubering really adds up. And the wait times were just annoying. It was annoying to have to wait like 20, 30 minutes to get picked up to go somewhere else. Like that really ate into our day, I think, waiting around for Ubers. But yeah, we just, we stayed too far out to where everything really was. We had to Uber. It would have been like an hour walk otherwise. In addition to all the walking we were doing for the excursions. Next year is also going to be the 10th anniversary for TwitchCon. We're speculating that it's going to be pretty big. So if you want to go to TwitchCon and you kind of want to work it into your year, your travel plans next year, that would be the time to go because it's the 10th anniversary and it's supposed to be pretty big. You can expect for now to see me there as long as I can financially swing it. I would love to meet more of you, but I would say my goal for next TwitchCon, like by next TwitchCon, I want to feel more comfortable with some of the creators that I call my friends. So I want to be able to collab with them. I want to be able to have a conversation with them and have it feel like, you know, we're friends, not like I'm trying to impress you because I know you're another creator. I feel like that's just... That's my mindset with every creator I know right now, just because I, I don't know, I'm so self-conscious of myself as a creator. And I hope by next year, I'll be able to be comfortable with who I am as a creator, with the friends that I have, and I'll be a little less socially anxious in situations like that. I just, I don't want to be ashamed of moving backwards. Only up from here, right? Only up. I would say overall, my takeaway from this year's TwitchCon is that I feel very motivated and inspired to make content going forward and that is what i'm gonna leave it at yay makeup is done i'm actually getting ready to live stream after this so if you're wondering where else you can find me 
follow the Twitch, but also all my other socials. I have a link down below with all of my links. So if you're active on other social media platforms and want to know where to find me, check those down below. I am going to go blow dry my hair and then I'll be right back. Hello. I'm back. I did my hair all ready for stream now. Here's the finished look. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this style of video. If you did, please leave a comment down below, a like, tell me on Twitch chat that you liked it um, so that I know to make more. Yay. Don't forget to follow me on other platforms as well. I'll leave all my social links down below for uh, whichever ones you're interested in following. Um, and yeah, since this is my first official like YouTube video, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I will try to, you know, keep the pace going. I'll try to make more of these. Um, so yeah, subscribe to my YouTube. Uh, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed the content. And I'll see you next time. Bye!